All right, you guys, this is Ross, the fig boss. We're gonna look at the in-ground figs today. I'm gonna show you guys a couple trees that are a bit of a standout in my mind. A couple thoughts on some fig trees that uh, have really impressed me or I've noticed some interesting points. Down here is Neruciola de Elba. And although it is a very small fruit, the figs on these in-ground trees, as they mature, will be larger and larger. I'm really looking forward to seeing the size. I think they might be about double the size in prior years. It's not a very large fruit, but what is amazing about it is that it produces a lot of fruits. So it kind of makes up for it, you know? If you weigh the overall harvest, it's not that far off, I think, from other varieties, even though the fruits are smaller. They just produce a lot in a very dense spacing. Um, it's not the most productive if you consider the weight. To me though, it's impressive because the light requirements are low. We're gonna talk a lot about that as we go through this video, but the light requirements allow it to set fruit with a more dense canopy. So I can have, on this particular tree, I have six six fruiting branches and every single fruiting branch has fruits pretty much top to bottom. Whereas all these other varieties, they're so sensitive to having a lower light condition that you have to thin out the, the fruiting branches to about four, maybe even three. And um, this Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross is definitely one that uh, requires a lot more light than you might think it does. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people have been struggling to really see it fruit. So if you have a, you live in a climate, there's a fruit down there I have, but if you live in a area, let's say your yard, you don't get a ton of light. The unfortunate reality is, is that you're gonna struggle with this variety to see the, to see the fruits. So I am seeing some fruits here and there on this one and maybe there will be some that form in the next week or so but i sort of doubt it i think i may only get just this just this one fruit down there it just needs a lot more light so that's really what i've been noticing and discovering this year it's kind of the biggest thing some varieties require more light than others and as you can see this variety is doing pretty well but this Negra de Agde, but down below, it really needed a lot more light um, to set those fruit buds down there. So most of this is kind of naked of fruits down below, but as it finally got more light, as it grew, it was one of the taller, more vigorous varieties. It, it reached that light and eventually it got it and it set a lot of fruits and they look pretty darn good. Uh, I don't think the shape of it's that great. So we'll see about that. But overall, I'm, I am uh, more impressed with it than I was about two months ago when I was evaluating these trees based on their fruit set early on. Um, I really, really, really like the Violet Sapor Borges Oak Reese trees in here. They've done so well. And it's so hard to show you guys some of these, unfortunately. Here is um, San Baggio. This is a very rare Italian fig. And it actually does pretty well in a system like this. I wouldn't say it's the best, but I'm excited for that. I think Col Noir does pretty well. What I've been noticing specifically, I think is pretty interesting to note is this Daloso. And uh, I am selling this particular tree right now for anyone that's interested in buying it, but um, it needs a little bit more light than other varieties, unfortunately, I've noticed. And down here at the base, you don't really get a ton of fruits until it really reaches more of that light. But when it does, I've really noticed that the shape of these fruits is like perfect. I mean, it's so spectacular. This is exactly what I'm looking for out of a variety in terms of the shape. 
And it's amazing that the shape has changed so dramatically. There's two figs right there. So dramatically from growing it in a pot versus growing it in the ground. It's really amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, what a total difference this is. The figs look very different. The stem is a lot longer. The neck is a lot longer. It seems like a totally different fig. It's crazy. So I've been impressed with this quite a bit. And I'm excited to see how the fruits change. You know, not only are the, the shapes and all that, and the rain resistance, the split resistance is gonna change, but the quality of the fruits should change too. Um, here's my Smith. It finally has some fruits on it. It's another one of these trees that just needs more light than other varieties. It really is a bit of a shame. I've been doing some pinching on this and that's kind of what activated these fruits. And you know, some varieties really just need that pinching. I'll tell you. Um, others can do without it and others I think really desperately need it here. Um, here's a little, here is actually another one that's pretty impressive is the golden rainbow. It's got some pretty decent production on it. The Pastelier finally put on some fruits after I pinched it. Uh, the Nero 600M back here. This is Violet de Bordeaux. This is loaded. A very shaded back in here as well. And uh, uh, there's so many suckers that come up on that tree. It's crazy. I've also put in a number of trees in the summer. I planted these trees in the summer in the ground. This one here is called uh, Verdo Long. This is a late fig that I think reminds me a lot of De La Senora Hibernenka and Coldenam Katat, et cetera, et cetera. So really in a short, guys, in a short sense, the best advice I can give any of you is to give your fig tree more light. It's really all it comes down to. The better you space the branches, the more light you give them, the better the angle of the branches, the better off you're going to be. You want more horizontal angles on your branches. You don't want them growing straight up in the air and the, you know, the Colonel Littmans and the Smith. I would even argue the Italian 258, they're kind of struggling because they don't get enough light. They are, you know, in their own respects, very fantastic varieties. But if I don't have the light, I can't get those fruit buds to set and to get the production that I need and should have. This area here has been a um, very low light environment. And that's its biggest problem, is that this is even less light than the southern exposure and even less light than this western exposure. So this even just really struggles to fruit quite frequently. Um, one of the trees though in here, however, that has been very impressive is um, this one down here. It's called Constance. And I do believe if I had pinched these branches a long time ago, I waited till the last day of the year I've learned a lot this year, guys, about pinching. It really is just absolutely necessary and a very, very good idea for many reasons, which I will have a separate video on. But it would be absolutely necessary, I think, to pinch these branches. And if I did, a lot of these trees would have a lot more fruits on them. I really do believe it has a lot to do with the angle of these branches. And maybe if the angle was a bit more horizontal, I wouldn't have to pinch them. But certain trees are just stubborn. And by pinching them, you're really changing those hormones and encouraging the tree to fruit. Others like this Rondé Bordeaux have so much fruit on them without any pinching. And a lot of that has to do with the natural habit of the tree. The natural habit is that it loves to spread. This tree grows very much so outwards rather than straight up in the air. And that really helps it fruit. This side of the yard, by the way, has the best trees of this whole planting, this whole high dense system. More of these trees are more mature. They've been doing a lot better. I think uh, 
Some of them don't have the right angle of the branches, unfortunately. And I, they would have done much better with pinching, like this white Marseille. We pinched it, and there's a lot of fruit buds down here that just never formed, never formed on the trees. I thought and I hoped that pinching would activate them. It just doesn't appear to be the case. Maybe there is a fruit forming there. Um, you know, these stubborn trees, based on the light, based on the angle of the branches, I think, just are not forming the fruits, even if they've set the fruit buds. So if I had come in here, I believe this to be true, is if I came in here around June 15th, did my pinching, let the new branches grow, as you can see, they form these new branches, these green, these green growths here. There's four new branches. If they had done that, um, I would have formed fruits down here and I would have formed fruits up here. But instead, now that I've waited so long to pinch, I'm only re really seeing the fruit buds form higher up on the tree. Rather than missing out like, like this tree here, you could see these fruits have formed. Rather than missing out on a lot of the fruits down below, even though this, this tree was pretty good about fruiting a little bit higher up. And I've tried to mess with the angle of the branches. You know, I've tried to stake them here, as you can see this branch, to give this, this white Marseille a little bit more light. But it just didn't seem to really make a difference. Um, all in all though, if you had more light, I wouldn't have these problems, I think. I would not be dealing with this. Here's one of the better figs in this whole planting. They have figs all the way at the base. Pretty much on every single node, there is a fig down here at the base. And it goes all the way up. All the way up the branches. This is LSU Huye. And I have a number of figs in this planting that do that on every single node, just like the Neruccio Adelba. This LSU Huye is fantastic. It grows. As it grows, it puts out more fruits. It's just fantastic to see. Pinching it certainly helped speed that up a little bit. Um, I really am also impressed with uh, Moro de Caneva. I've always been, but I mean, the production on it is just crazy. It's just a great variety. I love the shape of the figs. They look a lot like the Daloso, actually. It's just fantastic to see. Um, fruits everywhere. Blue Celeste, this stallion here, has been really impressive. Sets a lot of fruits. And it sets a lot of doubles. It's tough to really get in here, guys, and show you all these trees, I'm telling you. Uh, Campaneri has been very impressive. You know, a lot of these guys are showing fruits pretty much all up and down. Here's LSU Tiger. A lot of the LSU figs guys really do well in this system. You can see those fruits down there, doubles. They all have that Celeste in them and they all don't really need nearly as much light as the other varieties. Here's a um, Long to Do. Same thing, man. Produces a lot of fruits all up and down the branches. Very vigorous. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, though. I think LSU Tiger, or LSU Huye, and LSU Champagne are the best producers. They just produce so many figs, it's insane. Look at that. Um, and it's all over these branches, you know? So I got mixed reviews, right? I got mixed mixed bag across the board based on how much light it received, how much light is required, where the tree is planted, even just planting them in different spots, having different varieties in different spots. You notice different areas of the yard that receive less light. 
how the trees perform and respond there, even if they're the same varieties, how these figs are responding to pinching. I'm gonna do a whole different video on the pinching very soon um, because I'm seeing incredible results. And I would have seen even better results if I came in here and pinched these trees earlier um, I would be a lot happier, a lot more impressed. But, yeah. There isn't a whole lot to show. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see this. There's a lot of fruits, I guess, to show, but not many of them are ripe just yet. It's, mid it's almost mid-August, so we should be seeing fruits very, very soon on a lot of these trees, especially the LSU Huye and uh, some of these other trees that were underneath the tunnels. As I, decide, as I said, we just didn't get the start that we wanted with the dieback. This little ruby has been producing main crop though for uh, quite some time. It's actually very impressive. No head start, just uh, survived the winter. And then I'm gonna end on this tree here which is Texas BA1, survived the winter as well. Look how big it is. Look how much space it's taking up. This tree is massive. It's huge. I mean, but guess how many fruits are on this, this thing? Look at that trunk. There's almost no fruits on it. I think there's no fruits on it. It's very closely related to Smith. It just needs more light. And this location here, unfortunately doesn't get the amount of light it requires to set the fruits so sad times and i bet you if that did get the light it needed it, it probably would be producing right now the first or second week of august right alongside this uh little ruby so really sad i could have probably had like 200 fruits on that tree all right guys We'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. There's more to come. We'll see you guys for the next in-ground fig tree videos. Take care.